Hello again. I know it's been a while, but here I am. So I'm gonna tell you guys just a couple of reasons why I think the Music Man Stingray is pretty much the best all around bass that money can buy right now. The number one reason why, there's there are many reasons, but here's the number one reason. Number one, they look good. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but they do. They have a timeless design, but Number one is affordability, really. These instruments, like the one you're looking at here, this is not a cheap instrument. This is an Ernie Ball Family Reserve fretless Stingray. It actually is the most expensive bass I've ever purchased so far. But I've, I've been really close to this price with other basses. With a Ken Smith, I got a vintage fee bass for two grand. And, um, but I really scored on that, long story. Uh, same thing with the upright. I got a vintage upright that was just a sh little shy of two grand. I think it was like 1800 or 17 or 1800 in 1997. That was a lot of money, right? This is one of the few companies I feel like where you can buy, you can spend the money on this, but you could also buy this. Now it's much heavier, but you could buy something like this. This was the first of their sub series. This is a music man. It's an Ernie ball music, you know, music man bass very heavy but it sounds really good it plays quite well let's just talk fretted basses let's get away from the fretless for a minute fretted basses you can get into a music man easily a sterling music man for right around 275 bucks you can probably get one cheaper than that you can find them used for much less people will let them go for 200 dollars, and they will be a good bass i have played some sterling basses that play and feel just as great and they're lighter than even the the stingrays that i had back from the mid 90s that i got picked up in 1995 i believe i've played sterlings that that make me feel like gosh should i really spend the extra money should i really go out and spend you know well over two grand or you know upwards of three thousand dollars on one of these when i can just go and get now i'm not talking about fretless i'm talking about fretted when I can get a standard Sterling by Music Man bass for 300 bucks, it's really hard to justify that, really. Um, they're doing really great things right now. So affordability is one of those reasons why I think that the Music Man Stingray is a great bass. Also, the feel, the play, they have great necks, they have great low action on them. You can get them set up right and they play like butter. This is another reason why I think the Stingray is the best all around bass. Next point that I want to make, some of you may argue over the years, I've had a few people argue, but you really cannot argue. And that's the sound. And what people would like to argue, they'll say, oh, you got to have a P bass. You got to have a P bass. Well, great. I do have a P bass. I love it. It sounds awesome in the mix. It's my go-to recording bass. Okay. But the Stingray sounds pretty good. It sounds very close and it has its own distinctive sound. It has a, you know, the Stingray is right up there with Rickenbacker and Fender Precision, as far as having like a very unique uh, Fender Jazz as well, having a very unique tone and sound that makes it to where you're like, oh, you know what, I can hear that. You know, you can hear Bernard Edwards from Chic and know that he's playing a Stingray. You can hear it in the tone that there's something about, it's one thing to slap the bass, but when you hear the way the Stingray sounds, when you play it with your fingers, even with a pick, it has a distinctive tone. This is another reason why I think it's a great bass. It's also a great beginner's bass. That's another one. If you're starting out and you want to know if you want to stick with this thing and keep playing, you can't really pick a better bass to start with than a, than a Stingray. Another point I'd like to make is quality. Their quality control is far superior to the quality control of any other instrument maker out there. It's true, especially for their budget line. Their budget line cannot be beat. This is another reason why I think Music Man, Ernie Ball, Sterling, all that stuff is the best for you to go with. It is the best bass that money can buy all around. You can play any style of music with it. It's great. If you want to slap pop tap, that's your bass. It just is. I mean, there, you could argue there are other basses. Gotta mention GNL. Can't say all this stuff without making comparisons to GNL. GNL is a great 
instrument and all that without playing them and having a lot of experience with playing them i'm sure they're pretty valid too and they do have a nice tone to them so i'm not ruling them out but i'm just saying like what you see when you go in the store or when you go into your local music store like a guitar center or you know sam ash you know just some of the ones that you really know they're so accessible that's another good point the sterling is a very accessible bass. You can grab one anywhere. You can go on Sweetwater, Zounds, uh, Musician's Friend. You can go to all these online stores. You can even go to eBay or Reverb. You're going to pick up a pretty good Music Man Stingray bass and you'll love it forever. So um, most importantly, I should have said this from the top, I am not endorsed by Ernie Ball, Music Man Stingray. They are not behind me saying this. I've just spent a lot of time playing their basses over the years. I just feel like once you get one of these in your collection, it'll be your go-to bass, it really will. The P bass, people love to use it for recordings. It's a, it's a very easy bass to deal with in recordings, plus it's a passive bass, and it sounds really, really good for passive. Same goes for the jazz. And I think that's why people stand by them so much, and I, I have all the love in the world for those basses. But when we're talking best all around bass, you are not going to go out there and find you a really good Squire or American Fender or even made in Mexico bass for under $300. You're not going to find one under $400 or you'll be hard pressed to find a really decent Fender for under 700 bucks. Really? I mean, you're hard pressed to find them. They're out there. There's deals out there, but none of them are going to they're not gonna measure up to a, a Stingray. Sorry, but it's just true. So that's what marks Fender out right there. Um, like I said, GNL, I think that's another under, super underrated. That was Leo Fender's kind of like his final resting place for making his music or his instruments, I'm sorry. I think they are valid. I will look deeper into GNL as time goes on. But as of today, right now, here is your best all around bass doesn't have to be a fretless I'm just saying I mean this is all I have right now this is it just fretless ones but I'm working on I have to thin the herd a little bit but once I thin the herd I'm gonna have to bring a fretted stingray back into the collection it's got to be here I just got to have it I just think it's necessary I think they have a great tone and I think that they just can't be beaten really they're here they have a legacy they're not going anywhere at least to my knowledge, they're not going anywhere. And that's what makes it a great instrument to go with. If you're just looking for a great, well-rounded, all-around bass, you can play any style of music with it. It's the Stingray. Thank you guys for watching this video. I've got a lot more coming to you very soon.